Hello Pacific Lutheran University, I'm DJ Winter and welcome to Loot Center, the sports show where we cover everything sports going on here in the PLU community. On today's show we will head out to the field for a look at PLU's ultimate frisbee team, check out the men's golf team and all of the successes they are seeing and see what our half athlete is up to this week. Our first story today is a profile on PLU's ultimate frisbee team. They are a club team here at PLU who don't usually get a lot of attention but today the spotlight is on them. Jenny Boots has more on the team. Like, you play frisbee golf? <laughs> is also a frisbee even a sport? Like disc golf? Oh, that thing you do with dogs, right? <laughs> One person last week was like, wow, that's the coolest thing I've ever heard. Like, like what? What do you do? And I say, I throw frisbees like people kick soccer balls. And that's pretty much what it is. Ultimate Frisbee is one of the quickest growing sports in the nation, and yes, it is a sport. With more high school programs emerging, college programs growing, and the presence of club and professional leagues, Ultimate is hard to ignore. Ultimate, I would say uh, it's, it's pretty much, it's kind of like the football field, it has football end zones, but it's a lot of like kind of soccer, like field mentality. Uh, it's, uh, you have to pass the disc, and once you start catching it, once you catch it, you have to stop, and you have to try to find another open teammate and keep throwing it, and then uh, you, your goal is to try to catch it in the end zone. And once you get a point, then it uh, starts all over. You switch to defense, and there's offense, and um, just keep doing it over, over, over again. But it's just throwing, catching, and trying to get in the end zone. There are seven players on the field for each team. Once a disc is caught, the player has three steps to stop momentum. Once planted, the player has ten seconds to throw the disc. There are two main positions in ultimate, a handler and a cutter. I think handlers function a lot like the quarterback in football or the point guard in basketball where they see most of the field and have vision for who's open and make plays happen. So a lot of what they do is decision making and creating space for other people. So whether it's finding open cutters and throwing to that space so that it opens up the field more or making plays happen themselves and cut up line or into other spaces to reset the plays over and over again um, so that we can work the disc downfield. Really a cutter. And what do you do? I um, generally work um, by running really fast and changing directions to get open uh, and moving up the field, um, getting this from the handlers, um, and then trying to try to score. I get to score a lot. One of the biggest parts of the ultimate community is the spirit of the game. It starts on the field where players call their own fouls. Many teams also embrace costumes and spirit awards. While games are competitive, the community is still an important part of ultimate culture. I like Frizzy because of the community. The ladies are beautiful and wonderful and it's just a positive vibe and it's nice. There are currently five club teams here at PLU and if you are interested in joining one of them, you can contact Rob Thompson at thompson at plu.edu. Next, reporter Dylan Foreman is headed out to the links to catch up with the men's golf team and to see what has made this season so special and to find out what does a day look like for a collegiate golfer. Throughout the season, the Lutes have dominated conference play and have been recognized as one of the top 25 teams in the country for Division III. Leaders on the team like Thomas Huddleston, Kyle Druggy, and their coach Chris Swanson let us know how they've gotten to be as successful as they have been heading to the Northwest Conference Tournament this weekend. I think this year, uh, for me as a senior, more than any year that I've been on the golf team, is just the cohesiveness of the team. Um, just every day at practice, we're here helping each other, competing with each other, always wanting to get better, and just strive to be the best team that we can be. I think uh, most of the success comes from just culture and attitude, and the guys having a good time together, and uh, you know, playing for something a little bit bigger than themselves, and and really stressing that, and team meetings, and team gatherings, and team dinners, and uh, I think they just know that they're a really good a good squad. They work hard. They have a great attitude, and I think it just shows uh, in the success they've had this year. They, they really play for one another, which is really hard to do in an individual sport. So, and they know that their success is based on how they how they do as a one cohesive group instead of just one person. So, definitely had more success than I think he's had as a coach at PLU. And so, um, you know, I think that's just a part of us being a really close team 
and we're really talented, but we also do the little things that help us, give us that edge. One of the biggest factors that plays into the Lute's success this season is the fact that off the course, teammates hang out together, eat together, and in this case, many of them live together, which is made for excellent team chemistry in a sport that normally receives only individualized attention. And just, I mean, playing good golf and knowing that we can play good golf and go out there and beat any team in this conference or a lot of the teams in this country um, is a huge factor for us. But I would say mainly it's just that we're all friends. We always hang out with each other, which we didn't do as much my other years. So we're not just teammates, but we're really good friends and love to hang out all the time too. At the same time, um, we're all like brothers and, you know, the team dynamic is the first thing that really uh, I think this year has been kind of the step above. Yeah, f without a doubt. I think they're a lot closer than they've ever been in the past. A lot of them live together. Uh, they hang out together. They go to lunches and breakfast together. I always hear they're practicing together and hanging out with each other. Yeah, I mean, I think uh, as far as growing up, yeah, I think they really have. And uh, they it shows in their scores because they're shooting better scores. And even the younger guys are really contributing, which shows a lot of maturity. Um, but yeah, absolutely. This season has been a consistent series of individual and team victories that have led them to become as good as they are. With that in mind, the Lutes will continue their conference play this weekend at the Northwest Conference Championships, and from there, try and compete in the national tournament. I mean, for us, conference is just another tournament. Um, we've been saying it all year for every conference event. It's just another tournament. All of them are equally as important as the last one. And for us, going into conference, we're just going to keep doing what we've been doing. Like I said, treat it like any other tournament. Um, don't put too much pressure on ourselves. Go out there, have fun. Be joking with each other. Don't take it too seriously. Along with their winning attitude, the team manages to keep it fun. Because after all, it is the sport they love to play. And it shows throughout their interactions at practice. Super funny. They have a sense of humor that I wish I could have most of the time. Um, but I let them be who they want to be, probably more than most coaches would. Um, I don't really hold them back from just being who they want to be and who they are. Um, I think it brings out the best in them and allows them to be who they, who they, allows them to be themselves and they're more comfortable with themselves. They're going to play better. They're going to be better teammates to each other. Um, you know, as long as it doesn't get out of hand, which it never really does. For Loot Center, I'm Dylan Foreman. The team looks to finish off the year strong by having a quality performance at the Northwest Conference Championships April 22nd through 23rd at the Tacoma Country Club. When you last saw our half-athlete, he was trying to hit off of two softball pitchers, and as the tape showed, he didn't see much success. On this week's episode of Half Athlete Tries, we head over to the baseball diamond, where Christian catches up with Anthony Goslin and gives baseball a try. Hi, I'm Christian Vaughn, creator and producer of Mass Radio Sports Talk, the most listened to sports talk radio show in POU history. In high school, I played football, basketball, and baseball. Now, I work for POU Athletics. I've written stories for football, basketball, baseball, tennis, golf, and more. Mentally, I'm an athlete. Physically, I'm just a guy. I thought it'd be a good idea to meet up with different athletes on campus and try and do what they do. This is Half Athlete Tries. What's up? I'm here with Anthony Goslin, POU third baseman. Anthony? How are you today? Good, how are you doing, Christian? Doing all right. Good to see you. Thanks for being here. So, Anthony, this is your third school in three years. Yep. So, where were you before and how'd you end up at POU? Out of high school, I went to Seattle University for my freshman year. Sophomore season, I went to Columbia Basin Junior College in Pasco, Washington, and then ended up here at POU. How'd you end up here? How did you make your decision? Um, contacted your uh, Jacob Clements, who's a senior on the team, and he put me in contact with Coach Stody, and then it's all history from there. You are different from a lot of players in the sense that you don't subscribe to the traditional ready position. As a pitch is coming to the plate, you give a little hop. Where did you learn that? Why do you do it? What's, what's that all about? I got it from an ESPN segment when they were interviewing Dustin Pejoria, who's the second baseman for the Boston Red Sox, and uh, it just basically gets him ready and gets him on his toes, and I'm like, hey, that might be a pretty good idea because I was really bad defense back in high school. So I um, started doing it, and it worked out for me, and I've been doing it ever since. So I brought my glove today. 
but we know you're pretty solid over there at third base. But I, I want to take a couple ground balls. Do you think think we can do that? Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> I think he's gonna do pretty well. He's a half athlete, and we'll see how he does. So, you ever had an injury playing third base? Yeah, I have. Uh, broke my nose last year from a bad hop, and uh, that's about it. About it. Bleeded myself a couple times. Nothing not normal. Pleated yourself? Yeah. How did you pleat yourself? Uh, a couple diving plays and just being uncoordinated. So you're okay. <laughs> um, what Third base is kind of known as the hot corner. Yeah. Do you wear a cup? I do not. I, uh, what? <laughs> I feel like I'm have good enough trust in myself to protect myself and not get hit in that region. That's fair. I'm Anthony Gosselin, I'm Christian Bond, that was Half Athlete Tries. The Luch just dethroned the nationally ranked Kingsmen of Kowloon this past weekend and are hoping to win the Northwest Conference Tournament this upcoming weekend down in McMinnville, Oregon at Linfield to earn the automatic bid in the postseason tournament. That's all we have for today. Thanks for watching Luch Center, hope you enjoyed the show. I'm DJ Winter and we will see you next time.